Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is David Milan. I'm an HR professional working in Australia. So I've been a knowledge worker for close to 13 years now. And I've worked in many different organizations and industries and with different employees. And I've always been a note taker. And regardless of where I've worked, I've noticed that people are note takers as well. Perhaps it's a habit that we pick up in university and it stays with us as we enter the workforce. Or maybe it's because these days as knowledge workers, we have so much to remember. Personally, I'd find it really hard to get things done without taking notes, but maybe that's just me. So for the first 10 or so years of my career, I used Moleskin notebooks, similar to the one that I'm showing you here. And recently, in the last 18 months or so, I switched to the iPad Pro and I chose to use the GoodNotes app. So in this video, I'll be covering all the different things that I've learned and what I would be explaining to someone who is thinking about making the switch or someone who has recently switched from a paper notebook to using the GoodNotes app. You might find some of this pretty basic, but when I've showed other employees that I work with, they've been really grateful and said, oh, I didn't realize that's what you could do using GoodNotes and some of the systems and the way that I do things, they found it really helpful in terms of their own work and getting things done. So I wanted to clarify up front, you don't have to use an iPad for work. It is an expensive option. Is it justifiable? Maybe, maybe not. It's really up to you. It does enable you to do things in a more efficient way compared to a paper notebook. And I know for me that it has drastically reduced the amount of printing that I do, which is obviously good for the environment as well. I also wanted to clarify, if you do real work, this will not replace your laptop. So putting together a PowerPoint or VLOOKUPs or pivot tables, trying to do that on the iPad is no bueno. So this is not going to replace your laptop if you do those types of tasks. I've included what I'll be showing in the description and there are also timestamps as well. So feel free to jump ahead and skip to a part that interests you. Okay, so let's get started with an easy one, how to create notebooks and how to use the folder structure in GoodNotes. I really like the folder structure that GoodNotes uses. I find it's a really great way to keep track of things and to keep my notebooks organized. So one of the benefits of GoodNotes is that you can have multiple notebooks without having to worry about physical space or wasting paper or buying multiple notebooks. Let's just say you were managing a team and you wanted to have a notebook for each employee. That's really easy to do. And so we'll tap on new and tap on folder and we'll call this team management done and we'll go in here and we will add a new notebook and we will call this Jessica day and then tap on create so I recommend that you use grid paper to write your notes and if you stick around till later in the video I'll explain why I think you should do that and how it helps you to write in a better way and a neater way. So in order to create some more, really easy to just duplicate, you can go in here, change this title to be Winston Bishop. Then you go into the Winston Bishop notebook and then write on the front of this one as well. And then at a glance, you can see the different notebooks and which one you need to use. So the next thing I wanted to show you is how you can use GoodNotes to draw shapes and lines. So I'll use this when I'm in a meeting with someone and we are talking about a data set. I will often sketch things up and then we'll see how we might present something later. So for me, this is probably a bit more of a nice to have feature, but it is definitely more efficient than using a ruler or a protractor. Once you're in your notebook, tap on that shapes icon at the top there and then it's very easy just to draw straight lines as you need. These are a little bit crooked, but I think you get the idea. You can also draw circles as well, and triangles and lines, etc. Recently, there was an update to the GoodNotes app where if you draw a circle and you hold your pencil down, you can expand and change the size by dragging, which is pretty handy as well. Obviously, if you wanted to do this using a paper notebook, you would need to have a ruler or a protractor and those are things that you would need to carry with you. So this is a, a more efficient way of doing that. One of the things that I love about GoodNotes is what I refer to as the manipulation of text or the manipulation of writing. With a paper notebook, when you write something, it's obviously far more permanent. Once you write it, it's there for good, unless you're using a pencil and then you can just erase it, obviously. 
but again, that's something extra that you have to carry with you. With GoodNotes, it's really easy to change what you've written or to erase it as well. So let's just say I was in a meeting and I wanted to erase what I'd written. It's really easy to do. You just tap on the eraser icon at the top there. There are three different eraser sizes. As you can see, there's one there, a bigger one, and a bigger one again. So you can change the eraser style. If you come up here to eraser, there are different options. If you leave it on erase entire stroke, like so, it will erase that entire line. If I just undo that now and then change it to be, to, to turn that off, if you erase, it will only erase portions. So if I wanted to copy and paste what I've written and duplicate it, it's really easy to do. You just tap on the select icon there, select what you want to copy, tap it again, tap on copy, and then paste. Once you've pasted it in, you can change the size if you'd like, and you can also tap on it again and change the color. So I wanted to show you how I use the highlighting feature of GoodNotes to keep track of any actions that I need to do. So if I'm in a meeting and I'm taking notes and an action comes up that I need to do, I will highlight it in red so that later when I'm back at my desk, I can scan through my notebook and see if there's any red on it. And I'll show you how I do that. So if I go back to this page here and I just highlight this in red as well, if you come up here and click on this four square icon, it will bring up all of your pages in a thumbnail view. And it's a really easy way to scan through and see where is there red on the page, which is in my system and an action for me. And I guess this is akin to uh, scanning through a paper notebook. So once I've completed the action or I've transferred it to Notion or I've set up a calendar invite reminding me to do the action, I will change the color to green. And there's a few different ways to do this. One way is to delete the highlighting option there by just highlighting the stroke and then highlighting it as green. So I know that I've, I've transferred the action to Notion or to a calendar invite or I've completed it. The other way to change it is to select the highlighting, tap on it and then change the color to red like so. And then the final way to do it is if you come into the highlighter and tap on erase highlighter only and then highlight it like that. And then that way when I come back to that thumbnail view, I can see what is green and what is red. So it's a way that I can keep track of what actions I've taken and what actions that I've taken action on. If that makes sense. So that is an example of how I use the highlighting feature to keep track of actions. So let's look at picture importing. Sometimes I'll be in a meeting and the presenter will refer to something that isn't on the screen, but is really helpful and, and useful for context. And so what I'll do is I'll use the photo import ability that comes with the iPad and I will paste the image onto the page. So I'll show you how to do that. What you do is you just open Safari, drag it over like so. I'll then open here and type on concept design. For example, and I'll go into images like so, tap on an image that I like, drag it, over into GoodNotes and then swipe it back. And then I have the image there that I can take notes on and refer to and remember that's what was referred to as part of the presentation. Obviously, if you wanted to do this using a paper notebook, you'd have to find the image, print it out, cut it, stick it into your notebook. Not end of the world stuff, I know, but it is pretty handy to have the ability to just quickly grab it from Safari and just drag it into your notebook. So I mentioned earlier in the video that I recommend that you use the grid paper to write with. And the reason that I recommend that is because it does help to make things a lot neater. So once you finish writing, you can change the template to be whatever you'd like. So if you go up here and tap on that ellipsis, tap on change template, change it to blank, and then click on apply or tap on apply. So now you have a clear and plain template which I think looks a lot nicer. What is great about GoodNotes in comparison to a paper notebook is that you don't have to have the same style of page, every page in your notebook. So you can have one page as just plain, the other one can be the grid, 
and then you can have another one which has a different template as well. So GoodNotes comes with lots of different templates that you can use to take notes. And if you were, obviously, this is a pretty obvious comparison, but in a paper notebook, you're not gonna be able to have those differences between the different pages. It's either gonna be all ruled or all grid or all plain. And that's another benefit that you get from using the GoodNotes app. So in meetings, I will often hear things that I want to share with my team or other people that weren't able to attend. And GoodNotes makes it really easy to be able to share what you have taken notes on. So if you come up here to this four square icon, tap on it, you can select what pages you would like to send, tap on export, and then you can just change the, the title of the file. So once you've done that, you can just send it as a PDF to the person and uh, attach it to an email. So it's really easy to share your notes with other people. Compare it to a paper notebook. If I wanted to share my notes with someone, I'd either have to type them up or I'd have to photocopy the specific pages and then send it to them or scan it into an email. So it does provide a lot more efficiency and, and makes things a lot easier to do. Okay, so the final thing that I wanted to show you is how to mark up an attachment that you've been sent to review. So just say someone sent you a PDF and asked you to provide some feedback on it. You go into your email, tap on the attachment. If you come up here to the right and tap on share file, it will open up different options. So if you tap on good notes there, you, can, you have the choice as to whether you add it as a brand new document or you can add it to the particular journal that you are working on. I like to add it to my journal that I'm using for work. The reason I do that is because I guess it's akin to if I had a paper notebook, I would print off the thing that I was reviewing and then put it in that notebook and keep it all together. This way I can just add the attachment to the notebook and then I have it to reference. So I will import it to the current document. As I mentioned, I will just look through the slides and mark up some feedback there. And then once I'm ready, as before, just tap on that four square icon, select what I want to send back to the person and then just tap on export and it will send it back as a PDF. Okay, so that's a few different ways to use the GoodNotes app on the iPad Pro. So is it substantially better than a paper notebook? It's, it's really up to you. I find that I get a lot of benefit out of using an iPad and in particular the GoodNotes app it does make me a lot more efficient and a lot more productive. However, there is something different about writing on a paper notebook. There's a different feel to it. I know that when I, I, I grab this out of storage, I've had this notebook for close to eight years and I opened it up and I looked at the different pages and instantly I was taken back to where I was at the time and what I was doing. It just, just has a, a bit of a different feel. And I think I'm, I'm obviously getting a little bit philosophical here and this is really the, the part of the video where I should be directing you to watch other content that I've put together because as we all know, the longer that you stay on YouTube and the longer that you stay on on my channel, it impacts my metrics in a positive way. So with that in mind, if you would like to help me out and learn something at the same time, I encourage you to have a look at my Notion playlist where I put together different use cases on how I use Notion. And if you'd like to subscribe, please do that as well. I'm really interested to hear what you found most useful about this video. I read a book recently, which I've covered in a separate video, which talked about the benefit that you get from recalling and reflecting on what you've just learned. It's a concept called double loop learning, where the first loop is learning something, and then the second loop, the, the way that you really embed that learning and you form those new neural pathways in your brain is to recall and reflect on what you've just learned. If you feel confident in dropping a line in the comments, that will also help someone else learn as well. It helps me to understand what type of content you are interested in, and that means that I can make things that are providing value to you. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I will see you in the next video.